What is up, Nephilim? This is the Chain coming at you with another Diablo 4 build guide. We're going to be talking about the Whirlwind Bleed Barbarian today. But before we hop in, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. All right, let's hop right into it. So, I watched one of the videos from Rob, and I'll probably be linking his stuff down in the description. I had to try it out. This has been so much fun, it's been amazing. Before we go any further, I'm going to give you the TLDR. You're going to have farm movers for this build. Sorry, not sorry. It's worth it. And I switched a couple things around, but I'll go over that in the gear section. First thing, it doesn't matter. Get one of the basic abilities. I just grab Lunging Strike. I've never pressed the button. It is what it is. We're going to put one point into Whirlwind because we need Whirlwind to trigger our Dust Devils. We're going to grab Enhanced Whirlwind. It gives us extra Fury back. We're going to grab Furious Whirlwind using a slash, slashing weapon. Makes things bleed. Works out. Then we're going to put one point into Pressure Point. Gives you a chance to make enemies vulnerable. Helps us a lot because we deal extra damage to vulnerable enemies. You're going to grab Imposing Presence. You can see I have a couple extra points. I wish I had more than two, but two's all are old. Gives you extra maximum life. And then Martial Vigor is also really good. Damage reduction against elites is increased. Super good, super good. Rallying Cry. Gives you movement speed, resource generation, makes you unstoppable, and then gives you instant fury and some more resource generation. It's amazing. Iron skin, super good. Gives you a barrier, absorbs missing life, lets you heal back up, absorbs 127% more of your missing life, so ton more. And then you heal for 10% of the barrier generation per second, so you get back to full life pretty quick. Super great, super great, super great. Then we got points in Challenging Shout, ton of enemies, get some damage reduction, get more at maximum life, so we get more Tanaki, and then you gain Fury every time you take damage when Challenging Shout's available. That's important with some of the aspects we're using. Warcry, you won't Warcry on your boots, but the boots I'm wearing can't roll really Warcry, so I do not have that, but Warcry is amazing. Gives you extra damage for a couple seconds and for your nearby enemies. And by enemies, I mean allies. Sorry about that. Gives you berserking. And then if there are at least six enemies nearby when you use it, you get additional damage. It's amazing. We got three points in the booming voice to make our um, shouts last longer. And we got two points in our aid leader to keep us healed and topped up. Three points in the aggressive resistances. You get damage reduction while berserking, which is amazing. And then Prolific Fury, we got more energy generation while Berserking, which we are almost always Berserking, and you'll see why when we go through the talents. Three points into Pit Fighter to increase damage to close enemies, and you take reduced damage from distant enemies. Helps us stay alive. Slaying Strike, increased damage to injured enemies, which, you know, after they're below 35%, let's go. One point in the Hamstring, Bleeding Effect Slow Enemies. Three points in the cut to the bone. Bleeding effects deal extra damage to vulnerable enemies. This is amazing. We love having extra bleed damage. This is great. Thick skin. Each time you take damage, you fortify for some of your life. Awesome. Three points in the counteroffensive. When you have fortify over 50%, you deal increased damage, which is also awesome because we're fortified a whole lot. Three points in the heavy handed. Increased critical strike damage while using two handed weapons. Um, we're scaling our build with the critical strike damage, so this is amazing. We've got Wrath of the Berserker. Everybody knows what this does. Makes you unstoppable. Gives you berserking. Gives you more damage. Um, gives you more movement speed. And gives you more um, berserking damage bonus, which is amazing. And then we have Gushing Wounds. This is how we're scaling the damage, right? So when causing an enemy to bleed, you have a chance equal to your critical strike chance. And increase your bleed amount by 140% of your critical strike bonus. Bleeding enemy generates an explosion that deals blah, blah, blah damage over five seconds. It's amazing. Right. All right. So let's look at the Paragon real quick. As normal, my spiel about the Paragon. Do not cookie cutter this. Get what your build needs. If you need more defenses, get more defenses. If you need more resistances, get more resistances. I've had to move these around 10 or 12 times because of getting my um, resistances on different pieces of gears. I've replaced stuff. Please don't cookie cutter these. That's why we don't go over every node. Anyway, first node, exploit. Once you hit an ability, and once you hit an enemy, it gets vulnerable. So for three seconds, you get increased bleed damage right off the rip. Awesome. 
Secondly, Warbringer, every 75 here you spend, you get extra life as Fortify. It just helps us out. It's amazing. Here we have Ire. What Ire does, give you increased damage while Berserking, and while Berserking, you take reduced damage from Elites. It's awesome. We're going to hop over into the Carnage board, which we do not have activated, but it gives us a quick Glyph Socket. We're using Might, which is giving us redu uh, damage reduction from close enemies, damage redu uh, extra damage while Berserking, and increased damage while dual wielding, or by, while wielding a two-hander, not dual wielding, excuse me. Then we're going to pop up over here to the Blood Rage node, killing an enemy has 10% chance to get Berserking if they are bleeding for 5 seconds. Your damage is increased by 10% of your Berserking bonus, up to a maximum of 30%. So you want to have at least 300% damage while berserking in your build because that way you can get up to 30 percent we have marshall giving us damage to bleeding enemies damage reduction from bleeding enemies and after casting a shout skill the active cooldown of every other non-shout skill is reduced by two seconds so this is giving us cooldown on our um berserk rage actually and then we have decimator every time you make an enemy vulnerable your damage is increased by 10 percent overpowering a vulnerable enemy gets an additional 10 percent here we have Twister, Dust Devil Damage is increased by almost 400%, which is insane. And then you deal increased damage for 4 seconds after creating a Dust Devil. And we're creating Dust Devils literally constantly. That's what the build does. Then we're going to hop over to the Bone Breaker board. We're not using Bone Breaker, but we're using it as a quick way to grab this node here, where we have the Wrath Room. Increased critical strike damage, which is amazing. And then when you critically strike, you generate Fury. So as you're running through stuff and you're hitting it, you generate Fury. And then lastly, we're going to run up and grab the Hemorrhage Rune. Your bleeding damage is increased by 15% of your vulnerable damage. My current bonus is 47%, which means I have 470% vulnerable damage. So, these are the boards you're using. Remember, if you need to move points around, get more resistances, etc. See, I had all of these at one point, and then I've moved them around elsewhere. Anyway, let me show you the gear, and then I will show you a quick demonstration on a 101. So... Again, this build has a lot of uniques, a lot of ubers, but let's check it out. Harlequin's Crest, we know what this does, gives us resource, gives us cooldown, gives us health, big thing, damage reduction, and ranks to skills. Tyrael's Might, this one is not absolutely required. You can use Rage of Herogoth here. Rage of Herogoth is going to make this feel super spammy, and it's actually a lot of fun to play it with Rage of Herogoth. I'd actually recommend trying it out that way, even if you do have uh, Tyrael's Might, just because of how fun it is. And then on our gloves, we are going to have Relentless Berserker, and what that does is damaging an enemy with a core skill. Has a chance to increase Berserking, so as we're whirlwinding through and we're hitting things, we have a chance to make our Berserking last longer, and we're spamming buttons to get it. Iron Warrior, this one's probably my favorite. So you want to get offensive stats, you want to get strength, crit, crit on your gloves. You want to roll damage while berserking here, it's an easy spot to get it. Uh, crowd control duration because of how it works with challenging shout. Then on our pants, you want this to be tanky. I have life, armor, shadow resistance on these and it's working out perfectly. Crowd control duration, imposing presence, I hope you get better than a two roll. Please get better than a two roll. I'm real sad that mine is so bad. And then here we're getting the Iron Warrior, where Iron Skin grants you unstoppable and damage reduction. We are able to keep Iron Skin up a lot with this. And if you're using the Rage of Paragoth version, you probably have 100% uptime, which is really incredible. Now, here's what I've changed a little bit. What you can have here is boots with defensive stats, movement speed, increased movement speed temper, and increased crowd control duration temper. But I really like having Yin's Blessing. Gives you a little more vulnerable damage, which we're using. We have Lucky Hit Chance to restore primary resource. So if that pops, you get a couple more Dust Devils from the other gear. You get a little bit of damage reduction, but casting a skill has a chance to cast a non-mobility, non-ultimate skill that is currently on cooldown. So as you're running through, whatever shouts you have on cooldown, Yin's Blessing can cast for you. So... Something you can do if you are like speedrunning or something. The only two buttons I press, unless I'm doing something hard, are Challenging Shout and Warcry. So it will basically alternate with you as you're pushing the other button, and it's amazing. It keeps your shouts up 
uh, like you have 100% uptime on your shouts, keeps you berserking up more, keeps your damage reduction from challenging shout up more, and it's just super good. All right, so we have Berserk Ripping on our two-hander. Mine's kind of crap because I didn't get any super good rolls on it and my Fury on Kill is low, but you want Fury on Kill here because it's going to give you more tornadoes, critical strike damage, some strength. Chance to cast Dust Doubles twice is very important, and then critical strike damage. You got to roll this on a rogue, guys. If you don't have a rogue alt, I'll help you level it. Hit me up in the Discord. Whenever you deal direct damage while berserking, inflict... 60% of the base damage is bleeding over 5 seconds. So this is just helping us get things done quicker. We're using vulnerable damage gems here to help balance out. We want 10 to 1-ish critical strike to vulnerable damage. On weapon number 1, we want to use swords because they have critical strike damage on them. This one's not super good, but I'm using it because I have it. Um, I have strength, damage, vulnerable damage. I'd like this a lot better if it was critical hit damage, vulnerable damage, but this is what I got. You want to roll Dust Devil Size and Critical Strike Damage on both of your weapons. Here we have, after generating 100 Fury, you generate two Dust Devils. That's why we're so happy about all of our generation. You want to, this one to look exactly the same, Dust Devil Size, except for you want this one to be the Fierce Winds. So every time you shout, you generate Dust Devils because we are shouting a lot and our Yen's Blessing is shouting, so it's going to be going crazy. Also... We cap out at 100% increased size. I have 91 something, something, something. But the second part of this is your dust devils are 18% bigger. So I'm over 100% total. Hey. And deal 1% increased damage for each 1% their size increases. They're capped out at 100. So I'm at 100% size. What that means is you only have to get 82% size on your two weapons to get to 100%. And once you get to 100%, you're dealing 100% increased damage. We have the Grum Papa. As Rob likes to say, love this item. Um, super fun, increases your critical strike damage by 100%. Now, I thought this was additive. Let me show you something. Critical strike damage, 3600. Critical strike damage, 1700. That's times two, everybody. That's times two. All right, on the neck. Mine looks bad. You want heavy handed here. Um, you could also get cut to the bone here. If you got both there, you would be Giga Chad. Um, and then you want cooldown reduction here. On your tempers, you want War Cry cooldown, critical strike damage. And then this is where I have my Whirlwind creates Dust Devils rune. So this is where my Dust Devils, chain, uh, Dust Devils imprint is. Super good. Works out super well. We've got the Blood Chieftain's imprint here. Whenever you cast a shout skill, its cooldown is reduced by two seconds per nearby enemy, up to a maximum of six seconds. You don't even have to think about this. It's going to keep itself down. So on one of your rings, and by on one of your rings, on either your glove or your ring, you want a roll of chance to make enemies vulnerable. We don't have a ton of lucky hit chance, but we're hitting a lot. Helps out. The other stats you want on here are lucky hit chance and critical strike or critical strike chance and critical strike damage. It's amazing. You get a lot on your rings. Warcry cooldown because that is our most important shout. And then um, this is the other spot where you're picking up damage while berserking. Looking at my stats, you want to have at least 300% damage while berserking. I have 331. And I have one roll here and one roll here, right? Um, if you are under 300, you can also, as you're getting your gear together, you can put damage while berserking on your neck, okay? Then the other ring I have is Starless Skies. If you don't have Starless Skies, um, put something along the lines of... Um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but the one that gives you 20% extra damage to your core skills um, if you have High Fury with um, similar stats here. Crit, crit, and then something else. Um, you don't have to have two rolls of lucky hit to make enemies vulnerable. But ideally, you want the Ring of Star of the Skies. Use your gems here to give you more resistances. Use your gems in your gear to give you more life. As you can see, I'm at about 50k. All right, let's hop into the gameplay, guys. So, what you want to do is, as you're running towards the mobs, you are going to press your three shot buttons. Why is she standing as though she's holding the slashing weapons? Shouldn't she be holding the two-hander? Let me make sure she's using the right weapon for Whirlwind before we even take off. You want to use your two-hander for Whirlwind. 
you also want to use act specialization so act specialization right let me make sure she's using the right weapon okay so i'm using my weapon there so what you do shout shout challenging shout and you don't hold down whirlwind you tap it that's something else that i learned from rob i was using this in a manner where i held it down but tapping it gives you way more procs from Tyrael's might um so what you do is you just alternate your shouts while you're running through if there are no enemies don't tap the button obviously if there are enemies you're tapping a button if your life is going down go ahead and pop your iron skin because iron skin you can just keep it up all the time right and there's no reason not to use it because as you use your shouts your iron skin cooldown is going to come back around right and as you can see you don't have to like stop and wait it's very similar to what i showed you guys with the andario's rogue where while you're running through you dot them up and you roll past you do not have to wait for them because they will as you can see after you hit them a couple of times and you're running away their hp bar turns colors if their hp bar is colored out all the way that means they are already bled up enough that they are going to fall over so you go ahead and roll past that grab your protection shrine keep going keep going as you can see the only button i'm actually spamming is my whirlwind and the reason i'm spamming it i told you already um you only use your shouts to alternate them um and if you're paying attention you'll see that sometimes i am shouting you know every six to eight seconds i'm shouting without actually pressing a button and that's our yin's blessing it is a blessing i do love that item it is really helpful it does a lot for us and it is just really cool i really enjoy it like we already got the guardian it's been two minutes and three seconds so you run in i don't pop wrath of berserker until i fight the boss because why not um and then you start alternating your shouts on the boss and they go down super easy play super chill you saw that she shouted after i stopped spinning by herself because that's what young blessing does but yeah um i use this when i want to turn my brain off and farm materials um well apparently my opals were close to full but yeah play this build it's super fun guys um super easy super chill there's really no reason not to um yeah i mean it takes a while to get it up and running because of the gear it requires but once you get it online um you do not have to have your gear masterwork to be able to do like 91 plus um once you get your gear to like plus eight you start doing 101s in less than three minutes and then once you get it to plus 12 you can just turn your brain off and never even have to think um still here don't forget to hit that like button subscribe button and i'll catch you guys in the next guide see ya